Hello beautiful, beautiful Leos. Welcome to my channel, The Intuitive Teacup. I hope this video finds you well, despite what's going on globally. I know it's a little bit crazy and a lot of anarchy out there, but yeah, if you're at home quarantining, being safe in your, your little place there, I hope this video can provide you some entertainment, if nothing else, but hopefully some very solid messages. This is going to be a tarot reading for the month of April 2020, roughly, right? We know energy is free flowing. It doesn't always fit into a little nice little box, but um, yeah, welcome guys. I'm happy to have you. This is going to be, um, yeah, April 2020. The first half will be love. The second half will be career and finances. Uh, not every reading or not every message rather will be yours because this is a general reading. You guys know my drill. Uh, I welcome you to come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind, knowing full well not every message will be yours. It's up to you to use your own discretion and discernment, your own intuition to take away the messages that you feel are meant for you, that resonate with you, inspire you, motivate you, confirm something you needed to hear, or the opposite, illuminate you to something new. That's my general spiel, those are my general rules. Everything else is written down in the dialogue box below for you, uh, the decks I'm using, my social media, how to contact me, etc. Um, well, let's hop in, let's hop in and do love. Any message that feels strange or foreign, drop it like it's hot, that's a message for someone else. And what is my last thing I need to tell you? Give these messages time to resonate, not everything will click instantly. So let's take a look at Leo's person. If you don't currently have a person, this could represent someone you haven't met yet. Um, uh, it could represent someone from the past too. So again, use your own, your intuition. All right. So they have some interesting cards, a lot of, a lot of powerful, heavy energy regarding career and finances. So again, I'm starting off for love here, but maybe your person is kicking ass in, in their career field. Doesn't have to be right. So, um, let's see in their energy, right? They're, they're presenting as the king of pentacles. So potentially an earth sign doesn't have to be Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, the king of money, the king of the home, the king of the household. This is frequently a, a card of like the husband or the father. So, I mean, maybe this is a reading for someone you're already with, or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's someone who's, who's shopping around if they're already committed. Um, but generally speaking, they're focused more on their finance. That's sort of what I get for this. They may be involved in building some sort of uh, house or doing a renovation, working on projects around the home, right? The honeydew list. Could you fix this? Could you fix that? That's sort of what I'm getting. It doesn't have to be a masculine energy, but it is presenting as, as kings and emperors, right? But yeah, anyway. So, I mean, the energy is very strong. Let's throw something on it. Let's see what we need to know about Leo's person. They're very protective. They're a very nurturing person. Um, they may be a little bit withheld in terms of expressing their emotions openly, um, but they have a lot of love to give. They, they definitely know that uh, real love is worth um, putting great value in. Um, there's, there's like a richness to the love that they're able to provide, but there's also very high standards for the love that they want to receive in return. Yeah, literally. I love it. The great cards. Unexpected income. Yeah, so if your person isn't doing well financially now, though I think they are, they have unexpected income coming in. And just to be real, in a love reading, sometimes you have to kind of twist twist sort of the cards a little bit. So unexpected income, like money in the hand, that could be an offer from you because sometimes a pentacle can be an offer of a gesture. It can be an offer of a date. It could be a, hey, let me buy you coffee. So that could potentially be you coming in because it's unexpected to them. It's their energy. Now it could go vice versa, right? But there's an offer being made. It could absolutely be in a job field or a job career or some sort of title change or position. Um, but then they also have change and it's shown with like a little vehicle. So it could be that they are traveling to see family Family and making sure that their family is all set right now. Again, they could be doing renovations in an, an, a, an apartment or in a house and having to like vacate while temporarily stuff is being done. It doesn't necessarily have to indicate travel, though it is shown with a vehicle. So for some of you, that could definitely be it. They could be changing in their vehicle. They could be, what is that term? When you, um, you like trade in or trade out, I don't know, whatever that's called. Um, it could also just be doing like, again, remodeling on their house, but not necessarily having to leave. They could be, you know, painting the walls or getting a new refrigerator or stove or some, something like that. With And I, I mention that specifically because it's so dominant with pentacle energy. Pentacles are anything that's in the tangible, in the 3D, you can reach out and touch. So, you know, your possessions, your home, the people in your life, your money, it, it, that's very much the, the focus of what's going on right now. Um... Let's see, they might be dealing with a Libra, signing a contract with a Libra, though it doesn't have to be. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll skip ahead here. So where is their head currently? They're a little bit sad, or they're a little bit stuck on some sort of uh, thing that disappointed them, uh, or some sort of experience. It, it may have had to do with like this repair or this, um, 
something about a missed opportunity in a job that I actually think it comes back around again. Um, it's like they're they're very focused on things that didn't work out, but what they're not seeing is that there's actually opportunity right behind them. So I'm almost taking this to mean there's a blessing in disguise, but they haven't seen it yet. Something that they feel they lost or they missed out on, it's there's I, I sort of see it as there's something even better waiting for them. They just haven't come to, to recognize that yet. I'm, I'm trying to get a grip on if this person is like single or this card sort of in a relationship would indicate to me like, you know, they, there's a relationship of the past that kind of took a heavy toll on their heart, but it doesn't have to be that. What are these three of cups? Whoops. Hmm. They got their ass handed to them. They got their, yeah, they got served. I don't know what that's about. Does it have to do with money and possessions? Were they evicted? Were they kicked out of their house? I don't think that's the story for most of you. So again, please don't, you know, freak out. <clears throat> it does have to do with this house, though. What about a whip in a house? I, I, I heard, like, cracking the whip. Like, they have to get their ass together. They have to get their ass in gear regarding finances, home repairs. Maybe they're behind on um, bills or rent or something. But the thing is, they're presenting with very heavy uh, energy in terms of money, in terms of being quite affluent or at least abundant. Some sort of sadness or disappointment in the home. It could have been, oh, you know what? It could have been a divorce. There could have been a payout or some sort of settlement or alimony or something. Okay, and maybe that's why it's presenting as like the father or, or husband or something. If this person, you, and I mean, you would know this for, probably for most of you, if this person is like recently divorced, okay, that makes sense then. In their heart, they're trying to put themselves back out there, but they almost feel new with this. They may have been in a relationship for quite some time, and now they're out on their own again and they're kind of feeling it out. They're like, how do I even do this? Like, I don't even know. Your person may also have a child. They don't have to, specifically an earth sign child, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Or it could indicate that your person is significantly younger than you. For most of you, though, in, in their heart space, they're just a little bit nervous to be out on the dating scene again. Or, or even if they weren't married, it could indicate that they were in a serious relationship for a long time and then... You know, someone packed up their shit and left, right? And I'm not necessarily saying that they're still harboring feelings for that person or stuck on them. It's more just, it was a, it was like a rough go. It, 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 yeah, like it took its toll on this person mentally and emotionally. And so they're still sort of recuperating from that, especially if they're just adjusting to moving into a new place and getting settled on their own or again, getting settled with their child. They may have even had to move in with their family or a father or something like that to kind of get back on their feet. So yeah, it's like they're they're having to move possessions in, in their life from one place to another is sort of what I'm getting. But in their heart space, they're like, I got a great pentacle to offer. Like, does anybody want it? it they're sort of self-deprecating or I don't even know if that's the term, but it's lacking confidence. They're trying to get themselves back out there, but someone's like, you know, be careful. This is my heart. Like, I don't want you to break it. It's actually really cute. Um, you could definitely be dealing with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Let's see. What do we want to clarify with? Let's do this one. What do we need to know about Leo's person? Why is the Page of Pentacles coming up in their heart space? They could be wanting to make an offer to you, particularly, obviously Leo is a fire sign, right? But if you have strong fire in your chart in general and potentially some Aries energy, this person wants to make an offer to you, if that, if that Aries thing makes any sense. Um, this could potentially be someone you work with, though that's not going to be for everyone. Yeah, uh, the Eight of Wands, uh, it's rapid, swift, fast communication. And we can sort of look at that as almost like the arrows from the, the bow and arrow that, you know, the archer shoots. It's like they're looking to get back into love. They're looking to shoot for the stars and, and find someone new this time. So while they're lacking confidence, they're also extremely optimistic. It could be a Sagittarius that you're dealing with, though it doesn't have to be. Uh, and then the action they're taking, though, then they have the Emperor. So here's, I like this, but I'm also cautious about this. It's not the biggest action card, right? I mean, quite literally, he's sitting on his throne in his battle armor. Um, again, I take that to mean recuperating from, like, a broken heart. He's sort of been through the ringer. He or she, right? The gender doesn't matter so much. Um, but the Emperor is all about control and order, sometimes tradition. So... I actually think that this person is slowly breaking out of tradition, almost in the sense of breaking out of an old relationship, or it's almost like the life they created for themselves, they realized they sort of had like, uh, you know, unexpected, uh, like a plot twist, if you will, right? So now they're like, oh, okay, well, that's what I thought the life I was building, but now it seems like I'm headed in this direction, by, kind of like by default, like... Um, so, th but there is a sense of like control in terms of how, who they're, again, again, oh, sorry. 
as I said earlier, there's a high expectation of who they're willing to give their heart to for multiple reasons. I think they have high standards and there's nothing wrong with that, but they're also afraid to, to be heartbroken again. They don't really want to, again, they don't wear their heart on their sleeve and they don't really like to be vulnerable. So th there is a sense of like concealing the battle armor, right? But this is a very passionate person. They definitely have a lot of love and energy and a lot of like sexual, sexual drive. Um, but right now they're thinking it through. They're not jumping into anything in their heart, they would like to. In their heart, they would absolutely like to move on. That's where all the action is going on. But in their physical movement towards anything, they're still kind of thinking it through. They're, they're getting things in order. I just, I just heard out of order. So I don't know if your person is a lawyer or is involved, again, in, in like a court case. Something about out of order. Being in a courthouse or, again, signing, signing a divorce paper. Why is the emperor coming up in Leo's person's action? But it could be an, okay. Let's see, let's see what it clarifies. This could also be an indicator of Aries season, which we are in now. So maybe there will be small movements in Aries season. I could see that happening because they do have some action going on in, in, like their, in their heart and wanting, wanting to give dating a chance or something. The High Priestess. All right, so eh, not my favorite card for action forward because she, she literally is not action. She is receptive. Uh, it's a can card of cancer. It's moon energy, really. Uh, she's like the receptive uh, energy for messages of communication from spirit, but we sometimes call her the silent woman. She's not actively vocal. She doesn't speak. She absorbs messages from the universe like a sponge. So I think this person almost has like, I, I'm getting like uh, something about like sonar, uh, like sensing vibes and waves of communication from the universe. So if this is someone you see either daily or weekly or just, I don't know, maybe your friends on social media, they're picking up the vibes. Like they're, they're putting out, I don't even know if they're putting out the vibes, so to say, although I think they are with this. Um, there may be small messages of communication, but really this person is trying to get a feel for you, like trying to get the pulse. Someone in this uh, situation may be involved in music, specifically drumming, something about the pulse, the drum beat. They're trying to understand potentially where you stand with them, but also this is all about internal balance too, so they're not going to make a move that's going to be like, shake up their world because their world has already been really shaken up. There's a lot of like moving shit from one end of town to the other, moving in with dad, moving like there's a lot of like kind of, they're trying to settle and, and find their roots again and establish like a really solid structure and foundation for themselves. So they're not going to be reaching out to anyone who's going to shake that foundation. I think they're kind of, they're approaching it with calm and again, almost like, almost like psychically trying to pick up on vibes from those around them, particularly fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag. So that, that includes you, Leo, right? So let's look at where, where you're at with this. And sort of, this is more sort of like what universe wants you to see about this is sort of how I read it. All right, so you have Queen of Cups. You have double Cancerian energy coming up, Leo. I don't know if you might be a, a Cancer Leo Cusper, um, or maybe you just have strong um, Cancer in your chart, particularly a, um, a Venus in Cancer, um, if that makes any sense. So, I mean, you're the queen of love. <laughs> I do like this card, but this is such an interesting depiction of the queen of cups, and it is the classic depiction, but it just doesn't speak to me in the traditional sense of cancers who are very warm and loving. There, there's sort of a sense of like her, her brow looks kind of angry. What I'm getting from this though, it's like, I don't think there's tons of communication between you guys. And there is, I was getting this earlier about like the sonar, uh, the picking up of the vibes of something, like the energy waves. I know that's kind of hippy dippy and weird, but hey, you're watching a tarot video, right? Take it or leave it. There's something about you are trying to like, almost like psychically communicate with them and like put out the vibes of like, I'm interested. Are you going to reach out to me? Are you going to reach out to me? And it, But it's almost like you're you're looking at the King of Pentacles just like, Hello, like without saying it, you're like, do you see me? I'm over here. Like, I want you to ask me out. But look, he's looking down, right? And, and sh she's looking at him. That's sort of why I'm like, I think you're very interested in this person. Obviously, right? You're watching a tarot reading on them. But I'm not sure they're in a place where they're fully acknowledging you. But it doesn't mean they're not feeling your vibe. I actually think in your mind, you're being as subtle as you can without like screaming from the rooftop like, I love you and I don't care who knows it. I actually do think this person sees you or at least senses your interest, but there's a reason why they're not coming forward yet. Uh, let, let's keep going and then we'll, we'll see what romance angels fall on this. I'll, I'll remember to do that, but... 
So in your heart, oh my gosh, or I'm sorry, this is your head. You see a lot of potential with this person. In your head, you're already envisioning building a future with them. This is very much a card of family too. So for one or two of you, I don't know if this is someone that you divorced from and again, potentially have a child with, but on your end, Leo, is there still feelings there for that person? Is there hopes of some sort of reconciliation or something? If it's not that, if this person is new and again, you're, you either don't know them yet or you're putting out vibes like a little bit here and there, there's always that scenario where like you run into them every now and then, you know, at the coffee shop or you see them every now and then at work across the hall or something. If it's something like that, in your mind, you daydream about building a future with them, like just like really cute, like kind of silly, sort of like immature thoughts of like, oh, I wonder what our children would look like. Like there's that sort that cute sort of putting, putting the, the, what is that expression? putting the cart before the horse or you know what I mean. It's like you're envisioning a future when like you, you don't really know too much about this person. I think it's cute. It's a little bit like naive and silly, but that's okay, right? There's no judgment here. All right, so what else do we need to know? Why is 10 of cups coming up? It could, it could definitely be a Sagittarius you're, you're thinking about. But you may also be wondering if they're still involved with their family or an ex of some kind. In fact, yeah, some of you might know that they just got recently divorced or that they're going through a divorce. And so that's sort of what's stopping you is that you want to come in, but you're, you're waiting for your perfect moment. And I actually think that's smart, right? It's like if, if you're trying to win them over and not have to play a lot of head games or whatever, you don't want to come in when they're going through a lot of messy bullshit, right? So... You may both have children and there's something about sort of like a cute little like Brady Bunch scenario where it's like, oh, well, our families could come together and that would be so great and that would be so cool. Yeah, you're, you're waiting for your moment. You have the waiting for your ships to come in. What's interesting about this depiction, though, is frequently it's shown literally in pause, waiting at the edge of the ocean for, you know, the ships to come in, right? The offers, the, the whatever. Here she's, she's going on a little trek. She's going on a little hike here. Again, something about a daughter, specifically a daughter with red hair or maybe like a brunette. I, I don't know why that's coming through, but maybe that's your person or maybe that's you. Maybe you're just looking out for your kids or envisioning what your kids would look like. You guys may end up going on like a hike together or going, I don't know, like kind of out, out to, or maybe you jog or run together. It could be someone like, I'm just kind of getting like physical activity, like working out the body. Maybe you see them at the gym sometimes. This also indicates to me you're willing to wait for the right one. You're, you're willing to go off on your own and maybe focus on some stuff for your own personal growth and personal achievements, but there's definitely a part of you that is still keeping this person sort of in, in like the corner of your mind. So I actually do like this. While you do fantasize and dream about this person, when, when they're not around Leo, you are very determined of like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to let you off the hook. I'm still going to keep you in my mind, but I'm going to go take care of my own shit. That's sort of what I get from that. It's good. It's really good. Let's see where your heart is at. Your heart is like, marry me, the Hierophant. So this is the card of Taurus. Frequently, like, you know, the Pope, the priest, um, someone, you know, who, who gives like the marriage ceremonies, right? It's also a leader, a spiritual leader. So in your heart, you're like, I, I'm almost getting like, you're good with God. You're keeping universe, like, um, you're, you're keeping God and source and spirit and universe close to you. Faith probably plays a significant role in your life. But yeah, it, again, something about this, it's very much envisioning a future with this person. Um, so yeah, in, in your heart, it's like you see them as a potential marriage opportunity. Um, again, a, a card of Taurus. I, I think I already mentioned that. Um, if it's not that, again, in your heart, this could have been someone you were previously married to or someone who was previously married. And even the way this is, again, I feel like we're, we're putting the cart before the horse and kind of jumping the gun on these like marriage proposals. Every now and then I can see this as like offering the ring. So even if this isn't uh, off, like based in truth or reality, in your heart, in your imagination, in your hopes and dreams and wishes, you're hoping this person makes a very quick action to offer you something that is committed, right? If it's not marriage, it could also be long-term commitment. Um, Again, that could also represent someone you see at church, like socially, right? Why is the Hierophant coming up in Leo's spread in the heart space? Again, something about keys too, moving spaces, moving apartments. This person may have moved closer to you and, and now it's like it's becoming more of a reality that you could see each other more. 
All right, so you have Queen, or I'm sorry, King of Wands. All right, fantastic, that's you. And then you also have the Devil, again, leaving the home. Look at that depiction, right? And, and wandering off into the woods, going, going on a nature walk or a nature hike with you, Leo. Maybe that's, that's when you guys first start cementing the idea that maybe you guys could be a couple. If, again, you're just hanging out as friends or just socially. Yeah, there's some sort of like um, uh, opportunity for you guys to, I just keep getting like, go for a walk in the woods together, right? And I don't know, maybe they try and smooch you behind a tree or something. And I don't know, maybe that's, that's when you decide that you're going to talk about being more serious and being more committed. You've been writing out either in a diary or in a journal how you feel about this person, or you've been um, trying to figure out how you're going to talk to them about your feelings or phrase it. Because your deepest, darkest fear is that this person is going to resent you. Uh, I'm sorry, not resent you, uh, reject you. <laughs> Although maybe that word came out for a reason, resent you. Some of you do have a past with this person, particularly like on again, off again, like marriage, divorce, this and that. And that's not for everyone, right? For some of you, it's new, but in your head, you do want the fairy tale ending. That's what this card is. All the dreams and wishes coming true, you know, the happily ever after. You have a lot of cards of like love and marriage and commitment. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys, my camera froze. So yeah, there's some, there's a focus for you about wanting to express yourself correctly, but sometimes you feel rather than in spoken word, you express it better in written word. And here's why that's interesting. That's why this high priestess is coming up in your person spread, because I don't think you guys communicate verbally about something all the time. It's either via text or, or, I mean, does anybody write letters anymore? I hope so. That's adorable, right? If you're writing like postal postcards in the mail, that's like so sentimental and old school and romantic. I love it. But yes, yeah, something about this Cancerian energy, whether you have cancer in your chart or not, it's representing you. And as I said, you're writing to them. That's why I was saying with, with the high priestess, it's the silent woman. She frequently has a scroll in front of her. And that's what your card, this Leo card here, you know, the, the king of fire, whether you're male or female. They're all shown as female in this deck, by the way, but this is the king. She's writing it out, right? Right? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of fear coming up with the devil card here. You're worried you're, you're going to grow old alone. You're worried you're never going to find that person. You're worried that this person isn't going to commit to you. You're worried that you're... Yeah, I, I think a lot of my Leos who at least resonate with this reading, you're looking for marriage. You're looking for the long term, but you're, you're fearful. Let's, let's throw one more thing on this devil card. I'm curious. It could be a Capricorn you're dealing with too. I don't, I don't want to discount that, but... Something about leaving the home or like kicked out of the home. I don't know if that's you or did you have to leave home at a very young age, Leo? Did you move around a lot? Were you like a military brat or this kind of this could have been your person too? Something about you both are looking for safety and security in the home and that is such a Cancerian trait. They rule like the the house of of like um the house of homes. No, but every every zodiac sign, you know, there's a house of this and a house of that. Cancer rules the home and the house. Um so yeah, one and and maybe it's your person. Maybe your person has very strong cancer in their chart. You both are looking for safety and security where you can finally settle down where you can finally like lay some roots or lay, however you say that expression something rooted in the earth that that offers longevity that will stand the test of time you know commitment till death do us part right and and for you that's your biggest fear that that isn't going to come along for and if it's not that they moved closer to you it could be the opposite that they moved very far away from you there there's something about a growing distance and it's, it's somehow, it's like even in your subconscious, it's manifesting as, as uh, fear and anxiety. Yeah, you're almost worried. You're, you look at singlehood almost as a death sentence. And it doesn't necessarily mean now, but it's something that really scares you when you project into the future. You're like, but what if I never find my person? What if I never get my happily ever after? Flat out, Leo, this is some tough love, but like, 
you're going to get what you manifest. So there's no point in focusing on, on the lack mentality of what if I never get this and what if I never get that? It's like the what ifs aren't even there yet. So you, you don't need to worry about that. You sort of need to let things happen a little bit more organically. With all this earth energy, seeds, seeds develop organically. You can't will the seed to become a flower. You just kind of got to let it do its, do its thing. By all means, I mean, maybe you do need to communicate. Maybe you do need to say how you feel. And I do think a lot of you will decide to do that. Um, but yeah, you're, you're letting your fears and anxiety, you're like, you're letting the devil win. You're letting the darker side of your energy win over. It's literally, look like whatever you believe in, right? It's literally the devil versus God, right? Isn't that kind of funny? So it's representing your, again, this fantastic metaphor for cancers, the dark horse and the light horse of the chariot card, which is a card of cancer. They need to work in unison because everybody as a human being has dark and light energy. They need to work in unison together, right? Collaboration to get that chariot to move forward, right? There's a beautiful balance of dark and light. And again, everybody has it in them, but it's like you're letting the darkness eclipse the light so that you're, you're sinking into potentially like a state of depression um, that, that you're never going to break free. You're, you're ne- I just heard I want to break free from that, that song by Queen. I want to break free from the lies. You're so self-satisfied. I don't need you. What is that about? I think that's, that's about you freeing yourself from the devil, unshackling yourself from, again, the darker side of your personality. What's interesting is your person has that in them too. They're focusing on the, the dark, the negative, the spilled cups, the sad emotions versus focusing on like the new optimism, like the new opportunities, the fresh new opportunities at love. Um, your purse, I mean, this isn't going to be for most of you, but one or two of you, the, the idea of a jail or a prison, does somebody work at some sort of like institution or work with convicts or, I mean, maybe they did a stint in jail or something like that. Is that the wedge that drove a relationship apart in the past? Um, it's, it's more to me in metaphor, the idea of a prison sentence being alone for the rest of your life. Leo, that's not going to be it. Like you got all the cross watchers, Leo. People are always stoked and excited about Leo. Like you're literally stoked, right? The fire. People are always crushing on Leo. So you're going to be just fine, but get your head out of that headspace. Cause yeah, it's like your heart wants this, but it believes this. And so there's, there's confusion from the universe. Like you, you sort of just have to will it into existence and manifest. Like I, I will marry the, the person of my dreams and it will be great. And here's how I'm going to do it. And like map out your plan. Maybe that's what that is, right? Map out your five year plan, right? It'll at least get you in a headset of positive thinking and how to move forward. So what is the universe uh, advising you to do? Interesting. So again, you're at a standstill here. You need to trust your gut. You need to trust your intuition. It's a card of Libra, and it does talk about balancing your mind. All the answers are going to be much like the High Priestess, which again is, is, for some reason, you're coming up with all this very heavy water energy. I don't know if you have water in your chart. Or maybe you're just extremely psychic or in tune with your your like your spirit guides, your your guardian angels. Like you are a direct source for major intuitive hits. So make sure you are like an open vessel to receive those communications from source because like, you know, whatever your religion or spirituality is, you got like bigger players trying to contact you. Like, you know, <laughs> the big guy in the sky, so to say, or big gal in the sky, whatever you whatever you believe in, right? They're trying to guide you in the right direction, but you might be a little bit standoffish in terms of uh, like your, your spirituality. You may be having like a crisis of faith with, again, with God and the devil coming up. It's like, there's a little tete-a-tete. They're, they're sort of like, I'm almost seeing them duking it out in the ring. And it's like, who are you going to let win? Like this all exists inside you. It's like, you, you gotta, you kind of got to hit reset. Maybe do some, some yoga, some meditation, get, get enough sleep, be good to your body. Cause yeah, it seems like you're a little bit off kilter right now. And, and there's nothing like, I'm not coming down and judging you. Like it's not coming from that, but it kind of seems like you, there's an element of you. that's like, I'm in love. I'm in love. And I don't care who knows it, but your person isn't quite there yet. So you proceed with caution, I guess. I don't know. Tell me about this two of swords and their action. Again, two of swords is really not an action card. You both are communicating psychically, both of you. I know everybody kind of weird gets weirded out when I hear that message, but there's something like if you haven't thought of them and then they pop into your head, there's a reason for that. It might be because they're thinking about you or vice versa, depending on how well you know this person, right? 
If not, you may have to lay the groundwork, right? Like if you don't know this person, they're not just going to instantly pop into your life. So yeah, it, it may be a bit of a trek, right? You, you may have to do a little bit of traveling or a little bit of movement in order to kind of get this person's attention. I do sense that you're doing it in like on a social media, like putting up pictures, hoping they see it, but it's kind of like, all right, well, that's cool and all, but like, when are you actually going to message them? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you need to remain calm. Something about the calm waters. When you're when you're in a state of calm, mentally and emotionally, you're going to have some sort of uh, illumination or epiphany on how to proceed forward with this. The Hermit. Yeah, this is not a card of, of relationships and action. It's a card of going on your spiritual journey. I really think this spread is advising you to focus on you just for like the coming a couple weeks or maybe month, right? This is for April, right? This isn't forever. Again, it's not a death sentence, guys. Like, let's not look at it like that. Focus on your own spiritual growth in the month of April, and this person may reach out when you when you least expect it. But there's something about your body or your your body's your like your mind, body, and spirit. They're a little bit out of whack. They're they're like a little bit like not in alignment. I'm almost getting like you know you got to go to like the. Uh, you gotta go to like the um, the auto mechanic and get your car tuned right and make sure everything's working correctly and you know fired up on all cylinders. It's almost like in metaphor that's what you need to do to, to your body. You need to make sure you're in a good place to receive love because you don't want to fall into a relationship because you are so desperate for any offer that comes along. And again, don't take that personally. It's just it's a message that's coming through. You don't want to love out of a place of lack. You want to love out of a place where you have enough self-love to offer it to the world. And so you need to find a cup that matches yours, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah, some of you are going to have huge spiritual epiphanies in the month of April. Like you're, you're going to see numerology, something about numbers. It could be 1111, but specifically the number nine. You're going to see that number a lot. And may, or maybe 911 actually, and again, that, that's not to freak out about, but it's something about a confirmation from the universe. You're gonna see certain numbers again, or depending on how you how you interact with God or spirit, there, there's something about like flickering of a candle or something that's going to be very significant to you. It will mean something to you. Yeah, especially with fire, your elemental, something with candles. Um, it, it might be a specific candle you bought that like you only use when you're in prayer or meditation or something. It's the Ace of Wands. There's going to be communication from source. There might be communication from this person too. I don't think there will be a ton of it. I think they're, again, they see you. They, they're feeling out your energy. But in April, I'm not certain they're going to communicate. But they will after with King of Swords. Yeah, there's, there's major communication coming in. But it's kind of like allowing you both to make sure you're good on your own before this comes together. Oh, there's going to be message, messages from universe in your dreams. So again, start a dream journal. If you remember your dreams, it's worth kind of like analyzing them, scribbling something down, even like illustrating your dreams. There may be some important hit or, or message that you get from that. Chemistry. There is a strong magnetic attraction here. Beautiful. And then release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. Yeah, this one goes out to both of you, uh, especially your person. But again, sometimes these these uh, stories can be vice versa. So, but yeah, is there hope and optimism here? Absolutely. Both of you have very strong cards, but you you both have elements of something drawing you into your sadness. We got to raise your vibration. We got to get you up and out of that. Okay. All right, Leo. I'm going to pause you, and then we're going to do career and finances. All right, let's get some brand new messages for my Leos for career and finances. What do they need to know about money, jobs, career, finances? God help us, right? <laughs> With this whole Corona thing going on, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. <laughs> messages for Leos, best and highest good, career and finances. All right, those came out quite quick. All right, cool. Bottom of your deck. Oh, Leo, you're going to be just fine. Ten of Cups. That's what you're working towards because that's what's on your mind. The long term, the fairy tale. Guys, stop it. You have all the same cards coming up. This is a brand new deck, by the way. I just want to show you. <laughs> this is what was coming up before is like hoping that person makes an offer, right? Like that's, you know, the arrows, the bow and arrow of making that offer to you. And then you're thinking about, yeah, you're Ten of Cups, but I'm going to go do me for a, wh a while. <laughs> this is coming up again. 
<laughs> Don't let it cloud your judgment though. Focus on things you can control, right? Or else you're gonna spin, you're gonna spin out. You're gonna spin your head out into like the state of darkness and anxiety. Yeah, there's something you're nervous about. Uh, maybe giving a presentation or a speech or doing something in a public forum where all eyes will be on you. It could be some sort of like stage performance or musical performance or something where you're meant to stand out. You're meant to like deliver something really grand and great to, I'm just getting like an audience, even if that's on like some sort of like, like forum on like online. It's something about the, the critical reception. You're, you're very worried about standing out, but oh my God, it's lucrative. It's very lucrative. If you go after it, it, it could be life changing. It could be, um, here's the thing. Don't freak out. This tower is um, sandwiched by great cards. Absolutely fantastic cards. So the tower card is not always bad. It's so easy to read it as, you know, the shit storm. And sometimes it is, I'll be real with you. But there's something about taking a leap of faith, jumping from a burning building. It has something to do with leaving something behind that it's always been familiar to you. It's always been home to you. So it's a false comfort zone. If you were to leave it and go after that dream career of what you really want or go after that dream career of something that lights your fire, that you're very passionate about, something you see as like um, magical or exciting, right? Something that it draws your eye like fire. You can't look away. It scares you, doesn't it? Like it kind of scares the shit out of you, but there's so much reward in doing it. For a lot of you, money, it, it will be a monetary reward. It will be lucrative. It will be uh, abundant, right? If nothing else though, it will feel like you are leading a richer life by doing this creative passion or this activity that brings you so much joy. But yeah, you're again, the, another card that came up earlier, you're at a standstill on how to go with this, right? But again, another, oh my God, you guys, your cards are amazing for career. Whatever career you're too afraid to go after, but you're thinking about it because you see long-term potential in it and it's everything you've ever dreamed of, the emperor, the one who builds the empire in a career spread, anytime this card comes through, I'm like, hell yeah. These coming out together, it's like, you need to be your own boss. You are, met, you are destined or... Uh, it was some sort of like venture for you to go off on your own. This is like my single ladies card, but look, she's very affluent. She leads a very abundant life and she's a self-made woman, a self-made man, however you want to say it. All that she's earned and grown like in her lush garden, she's created herself through her like hard work and determination, her persistence, her her uh, inflexibility on on like negotiating her dreams or compromising her dreams and what she wants. Very headstrong, very headstrong, but I almost think that's what you need because right now you're kind of wavering between putting on this like beautiful magic act versus being like riddled with anxiety about having to step out of your comfort zone. Again, with the tower though, what's so crucial to know about this is in tarot, right? The, the major arcana tell a story throughout. The tower comes in to free us from the devil. Again, a reminder, the devil, which you had earlier, if I could only find it, where's my devil at? The devil frees us, or I'm sorry, the devil keeps us stuck in a state of lack, in a state of lower vibrational thinking. The devil can represent a multitude of different things. It can be codependencies, it can be drug addictions, it can be lacking self-love, lacking self-confidence. When you are stuck in like devil energy for too long and it's reached its expiration date, right? That's when the universe ushers in the tower and be like, save that kid. Like Leo's got good things coming, but we got to get them out of the state. So the tower can be a harsh energy, but it is for your best good. It is a blessing in disguise. And then it, it sort of knocks you on your feet as a wake up call to realize like you have so much left to build. Like it doesn't stop here. Frequently in a spread when the devil comes up, um, it's indicating you, you've been at a job that you hate, you despise, you, it does nothing for you, it's not paying you well enough, it doesn't, uh, the company doesn't value you, this or that, but you're staying because it's all you've ever known. That's when the tower comes through to be like, no, 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 Leah, this is not where it ends. Like, let's, let's course correct, let's get you back on track. That's why this tower doesn't bug me because I actually think you're being asked to step up and do it yourself. I don't necessarily think this tower is coming in as a threat of like, that's it, get him out of there. Like, I, I don't necessarily think it's you being fired. I just really don't, Leo. It indicates to me that you're at something that you know it's not solid. You know it's not a solid foundation. Like, it's destined to come down. To me, that indicates you know you're destined to leave. You're you not meant to stay at this job forever because what you have coming in, it's, again, potentially very lucrative, but if nothing else it's something you're way more passionate about that will provide at least 
solid income, a steady stream of income throughout the years. And it's something really fun and creative that you'll enjoy. It's a labor of love. You have two of the best cards in tarot, like the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. Cards of family and relationships and collaboration. It could be a family business you're looking to get into, though it doesn't have to be. It could be something involving children or helping families. Or, or the opposite, helping older people. Maybe you want to work in like an old folks home or, you know, extend sort of lighthearted energy to other people. You're probably a light worker and you don't even know it. Yes, yeah, so you have the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Wands. Aces start with us. They're the first, they're the beginning, but they're they're brand new. So that's what I mean. You're busting out of something old that I'm almost getting like it's cobwebs. You've been there so long, like it's time to break free and, and do the new one, right? Um, potentially something with you collaborating a fire sign and a water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, though it doesn't have to be that. But yeah, it's like if you're determined enough, it's a surefire victory. It's a, if you're committed to it long enough, yeah, it's, it's magic. It's going to bring you lots of happiness and joy and pride. Pride in what you've built for yourself, the life you've created for yourself. And it's something about, guys, the emperor came up earlier. That's what draws the emperor's eye. You're kick-ass in your career field or you're going to be. That's actually what ushers in this potential marriage or a commitment from a partner. Again, a cancer, right? If you're not dealing with an Aries or a cancer, I would be shocked. But nonetheless, this is actually saying to me, these readings are sort of um, sort of co like uh, intermingling, if you will. If you focus on your... Um, career and, and like building the life of your dreams, the career of your dreams, organically, as we were saying, people are going to trickle into your life that, that will offer you that sort of romantic relationship and commitment that I think you are seeking, but yeah, you can't force it. Kind of, this to me is like kind of like go with God. There's messages there that are trying to lead you in the right direction. It's like a breadcrumb trail. So you're going to follow it, you know, to, to the happily ever after. But you may be getting sidetracked or distracted by people around you currently when, again, you haven't done the work on yourself or you haven't done the healing. Or if it's not healing, it's just you haven't gotten over like your own hangups to really go after it. And like to me, this is about confidence and being center stage, all eyes on you. So maybe that's a metaphor. Or maybe that's literal if you're in like the entertainment industry. All these fears and anxieties and doubts you have, this is kind of saying, of course, find healthy ways to cope with them. I'm not, I don't mean to just brush it off as no big deal because a nine indicates that's some, that's some heavy energy that you've been carrying around a long time. But the benefits of doing whatever it is that you're fearful about outweigh the negative. You're almost anticipating worst case scenario, but it's like God wants you to succeed. You know, the universe wants you to be happy as long as you're doing things that are good for your own spiritual growth and offering things to like society or, or the world that's putting good things out there, that's putting love and, and helping others. And, and even in small ways, the universe is like, yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Let's do that for a long time, right? Your challenge is, is, this is kind of your energy, the Knight of Wands, um, finding the passion, finding the drive and the motivation. The Knight of Wands is a little bit impulsive. What I'm getting from this, though, is the idea of longevity, staying at a job that you don't like, there's a disconnect there. Of course, everybody needs to pay bills. We need to take care of our family. But it's almost like you really need to seek out opportunities for that creative outlet to, to exercise that passion and creativity that exists within you. Even if you do have to stay at the job you hate for another couple weeks or another couple months or whatever it is, you need to make sure you're making time for, for your hobbies, for your creativity. Because this is one of the fastest moving nights in the deck. It's going to take off like a rocket when it's ready. But if you're not nurturing that fire and you're letting it kind of dim and, and almost like, um, like snuff out the fire. You need to like let it breathe, right? You got to give that creative project uh, oxygen and energy the way a fire thrives with oxygen. That's like a great metaphor for this like little baby, this little seed you have that, you, that you're trying to grow, right? You're trying to grow it into something much greater. <clears throat> Again, Sagittarius energy, uh, but I, yeah, speed, agility, action. Maybe some of you are doing something in like fitness or, or like a sporting event or yeah, something involving athletics. Maybe it's just saying take care of your body. And also travel. Something about travel is making you quite uh, anxious or quite nervous. <clears throat> if you were to take some sort of travel opportunity, even though it scares you because maybe it's out of the comfort zone, it's going to do wonderful things for your own growth and spiritual maturity. This opportunity for, I do keep wanting to say travel. 
it transforms you from a knight to a king. So whether you're male or female, right? There's a huge step in maturity. It's like you skip right over the queen and all of a sudden you become the king. An opportunity for travel is going to be very, I don't even want to say lucrative. It's going to be good for your spiritual growth. And that's sort of when potentially you catch the eye of this emperor. And if this emperor doesn't represent a romantic partner, it could represent um, a business associate or a CEO or someone very high up, an executive noticing you and being like, I want you to work for me, Leo. That's when, that's when you catch their attention because you take some sort of risk that, again, it's good for your spiritual, spiritual growth. Frequently, the stuff that scares the shit out of us, um, it, it teaches us the most valuable lessons. And very frequently, it's like the spirit doesn't want you to live in the safety zone, in the comfort zone. And sometimes that's what this card can indicate. It's like it's time to step out of the safety zone of the garden. You've built this life and it's beautiful, but what next? Like if you stay stuck there, again, there's no growth. Uh, yeah, taking, taking risks is a good thing. Um, smart risks, right? Only you will know what that is. You are always going to be in the driver's seat of your life. But there's something trying to come in for you, and it's going to bring you lots of joy and happiness, but it's, it's a, something new. It, it requires you to take sort of a leap of faith or a risk or take some sort of travel opportunity. Maybe to, to work in, it might even be like a spiritual group for those looking to do something involving like, yeah, like spiritual arts or uh, like a spiritual leader, something involving faith or I could even be like a tarot card reader, something like that. Anyway, the help available to you is the devil. All right. So maybe a Capricorn. Um, when the devil comes up as the help and also that can be extreme passion and determination to get yourself out of anything. It's almost like standing toe to toe with the devil. If you have this mentality of I will win, I like I am already victorious, ain't nothing going to stop me. Like you can't hold me back. It's like when you have the, like the voice of reason in you and you have like the light of the universe and the light of God guiding you, like sort of uh, almost like your, your torch, you're carrying like the light of God, you're, you're sort of a crusader for Christ, right? You know, I'm just kidding. But when you have that light in front of you, no matter how much darkness knocks at your door, you're like, Psh, I ain't got time for that. It's like standing toe to toe with the devil, standing toe to toe with your own darkness, your own energy energies, your own, your own lack of self-confidence or lack of self-worth, that's actually just coming into the realization of that, the epiphany that you've been holding yourself back, that's the help available to you. Again, it could also be a Capricorn or maybe a combination of both, right? Capricorns are very hard workers. They're, you know, arguably one of the most hardworking signs of the Zodiac. So yeah, that um, go fight win mentality, that reminds me of cheerleading. I don't know if some of you are cheerleaders, but yeah, go fight win. You got to be your, your own biggest cheerleader. And it's something about when, when obstacles, when hardships pass through your life, know that it is temporary. When it's like, halt who goes there, like, you know, putting, putting your goals and your dreams on pause, you sort of have to match the darkness with the light and be like, I will be coming through, sir, so you may as well let me in. It's sort of re re relentless. It's not taking no for an answer, specifically regarding your career dreams. Yeah, there, there's an outpouring of love for what it is that you want to grow and build in your life. So don't give up. Yeah, don't let the devil beat you, right? You got this. You're one up on the devil. Bottom of your deck is you, queen of wands. I love it. And you got a divine pairing, right? Yeah. Okay, so we got a nice little family thing going on too. So yeah, for those who are like, I'm never going to find my person. I'm never going to find my family. You absolutely are. You have like father, son, or I'm sorry, not father, son, father, father, mother, and child, right? Husband, wife, and child or kid, right? You, you have a whole family here. It's like along the way, you're going to meet people that it's, again, it's the breadcrumb trail that's aligning you to the future and the, and the destiny that you want. And for those who don't want a family, this could be your work family. This could be your creative collaborators. This could be your, maybe you're going to work with a group of fire signs and you guys are just, it's lit. It's going to be lit, Leo. All right. That's what I got for you. Oh, and the wish fulfillment card. I'll show you that one too, because why not? Uh, yeah, your dreams and wishes, they're aligning slowly but surely. You will make it to the fairy tale ending. Leah, that's what I got for you. Please do like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what resonates, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.